shooting display by Gary Trent. The word friendship uh, means to be being there from somebody, being accountable, you know, always being there for them, good or bad. They are like brothers. They would do anything for each other. It's just really an incredible friendship. Ted, take over, man. I'm not here with my man, JB. That's my best friend, honestly. We grew up together, played basketball together, just created a bond that will never be broken. Before their unbreakable bond was formed, Portland Trailblazers guard Gary Trent Jr. and Jordan Bolton were youth basketball rivals in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Gary's father wanted to bring the boys together, but that was met with some initial resistance where we hung out for the first time. He didn't want me to come over. His mom just had said, oh, you know, you know the boy that you've been playing with that's been killing you? Yeah, he's coming over to come play with you. No, I was not feeling it at all. She was just like, well, uh, he's gonna be here in 10 minutes, so you better be ready. You could see as time was passing that they were starting to realize they had more in common than they realized. I say GR came to our house one day and he never left. GT, JB, and GT, man, you know what it is, man. Ask us questions all night long, man. It's whatever. Right, get them going. Jordan and Gary went on to play basketball together and even win a Minnesota State Championship. Gary decided to play collegiate ball for Duke. Trent smooth from the outside while Jordan played at Lake Region State in North Dakota. And we FaceTimed each other every day, you know, would update each other on what's going on in our lives. And he actually uh, came down and visited me and came to a game. On February 10th, 2018, Jordan was partying with some of his teammates when everything changed. I've never been one to smoke or anything. And one of my biggest knocks on it was the smell. So on that night, they're like, we have THC pills. You should try them. THC is the main psychoactive compound in cannabis that produces the high sensation. From my understanding, not only did he take one, he took three. Jordan knew he wasn't feeling good. He asked several of his teammates, he asked several of his friends to either call and get him help, and no one did that. And so Jordan went to his room. He initially fell asleep, but then started having dreams or hallucinations. Tweaked out, didn't have any sense of reality, really. and ran full head of steam into a wall. I could feel my neck was broken and God just telling me to get up. And then I saw a glimpse of what my funeral was gonna look like. And I just told him I wasn't ready. I was told that he had just had a drug overdose. When I called back, I was informed that I couldn't talk to the doctor at that time because Jordan was being taken in to have more scans done. And I got a phone call probably 20 minutes after that to say that he was paralyzed. Jordan was diagnosed with an incomplete spinal cord injury. As soon as I heard about it, we had a film session, and then I remember going to the film session, and I don't remember nothing from that film session, to be honest with you. It was really hard to see him laying there and know that he couldn't move anything from the chest down. When the doctor came in the room, he said that the news wasn't good and that Jordan had a 5% chance of making any recovery. A few weeks later, Gary would see his best friend in person for the first time. He looked way different from the last time. You know, when I seen him, obviously, uh, his body was frail, a whole bunch of cords, a lot of stuff beeping. I could tell he was concerned and scared, so I just made sure to 
assure him that I'm gonna be fine. And then I just seen the brother I always knew and he was like, you're right, let's do this then. In the three years since the accident, Gary has remained a constant presence in Jordan's life. He's attended several rehab sessions in Minnesota, providing encouragement and motivation, determined to help his friend walk again. I really can't put into words how much of a great friend and guy he is. So he does a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't see, like calling me every day. He makes sure I'm doing my workouts. Slowly, Jordan has regained the use of his arms and can sit upright on his own, something doctors weren't sure he'd be able to do. I'm not moving until I feel it. There you go. That's it. That's it. The ultimate goal is to walk again. When they told me I had a 5% chance of any recovery, when I couldn't feel or move from the neck down, they didn't even think I'd be here. There we go. Nice. A lot of people tell him this uh, miracle, the stuff he's doing. They've never seen it before. Uh, for somebody to have an injury to that magnitude where they have a 5% chance to ever have feeling, and then two years, three years later, they're doing everything they said they couldn't. He know I'm always here for him, loving to death. That's my little brother. You know, I love him. Love you, little bro.